Hey guys, so this bad storm came through a while ago. Our, all of our phones went off, we got storm warnings, and uh, it was pretty intense. And so, in the past, you know, when these big storms came through, we would have to go find a safe haven. We'd have to go to my parents, they had a brick home, uh, we'd have to get in the bathtub, in the center room, just try to find some type of safe shelter for the family, because we live in a metal home uh, it is not very aerodynamic at all. So I always worried for the safety of my family. What are we gonna do if a bad one comes through? It will just it could take our roof right off and you know be really bad. So I said, hey, we need to go underground. And so that's exactly what we did. Uh, but we did it on a budget and we built it all by ourselves and it's homemade. So we're going to go underground and we're going to show you how we built our own bunker on a budget. Come on. Okay, so here we are in front of our bunker that we built. Our bunker really is just a 10 foot diameter piece of corrugated pipe that's 25 feet long. And so what I did here, I dug a big hole into the side of this bank and we set it down in there so obviously we had to weld some walls or bulkheads to either end to keep dirt from coming in obviously and then we of course uh, put some breather pipes we put uh, our conduit for water for electricity all that good stuff covered her back over put this retaining wall out front which uh, just adds a lot more security to the entire thing because these blocks are three foot thick, two foot high, six foot long, 5,300 pounds. So they're not budging, they're not going anywhere. And so let me show you the door that we installed and then we'll go inside and show you the rest. All right, so this is our entry point. And what I did was order a commercial safe door offline. I guess this would be used for like a safe room inside your home or a vault, what have you. And so when we were doing this project, originally it was just a tornado shelter. It was just somewhere for my family and I, hey, you know, storm's coming, got a tornado in it, let's go down here and at least we'll have somewhere underground, we'll be safe. But as we were building it, it was just such a cool project. And then, you know, you get to thinking, oh man, what if we had a nuclear attack? Or what if we had a zombie apocalypse or some crap like that? We just kind of, it kind of evolved into what it is now. And so security became kind of a big issue. And if you're going to do something like this, you know, do it right. Make it secure to where you can use it for, for whatever. So check this door out. So it weighs about 800 pounds, I think. Um, and it's got these really cool pins that come out in a lot of different places. So if you'll come around here, you can see that. All right, so when you turn this handle, these guys come out all around the door and go into the wall. And it's gonna be pretty dang hard to get past that. So right here, uh, this is where the keypad will go, and so what I'm going to do is build some kind of disguise slash roof structure so that we can put the digital keypad here uh, where, you know, you can just punch in your code and you can you can come right in. So, pretty neat addition there. I was just going to do a regular door, but this is way more awesome. Alright, so now we are down inside the bunker. We're about 10 foot deep, eye level and probably 16, 17 feet down to the very bottom of the bunker. Um, so what we did, first and foremost, was weld angle down the side, each side of the bunker, uh, made it, make sure it was level, so we could then come in and put our subfloor, and then we put this hardwood floor down, just got it at Lowe's, nothing extravagant, but it works, it's easy to clean, and it looks pretty good. And so, did all beanbag furniture, because it, you can just chunk it around, you can throw it wherever, you know, you can take it outside and dust it off, and uh, it's really comfortable too. And so, like I said earlier, we ran conduit down so we could plumb it. Originally, I wasn't gonna put a bathroom in here, but I got to thinking, you know, 
if you got to stay down here for any given point of time, you know, you got to go. You got to go. So we installed a little bathroom, little toilet, little shower that we tiled. So on the shower, what I did was we just built that out of plywood, just framed it out, and then put down this plastic liner, uh, impermeable liner, and then just laid tile on top of that, bought just an old generic toilet, built these doors out of just wood, put a piano hinge right here, just so it took up less space. Um, left it open in the top so that it could breathe because our breather pipes are on either end of the bunker. And just put a little magnetic closure thing right there. Everything else, is everything's built out of wood, just plywood, nothing crazy. Put a little tile down here. Kind of went retro with all the uh, kitchen appliances. Got this little fridge, little microwave, Got a little heater down here because even though, you know, usually underground stays a consistent temperature of like 68 degrees, you know, during the winter, with the door being exposed and the breather pipes, it kind of gets a little chilly, so just to keep you warm. Uh, like I said, we brought TV down. We, I ran an antenna to the outside, so no cable, but hey, at least you've got a TV. Plenty of books and games and crayons, drawing, coloring books for the kids. You know, just anything to keep you occupied. If, like I said, you had to be down here for any length of time so you don't kill one another, you got something to do to pass the so, time. Uh, here's a little bit of water. So these are individual packages. I like to do this versus a big bulk container. Because if something happens to your bulk container, then, you know, you might be screwed. So, I like to have individual rations of food and water. But I did tell you earlier that this thing's 10 foot in diameter. And so, what I did was place the floor at 7 feet. So, that gives us 3 feet of storage underneath. And so, check this out. What we did was install these little latches and cut out some doors in three places. So you just pop those up and then you've got your storage for your, for your ammo, for weapons if you choose to have those. Uh, we've got MREs, the meals ready to eat, uh, some food, canned food obviously. Uh, anything that you can preserve for a long, long time. I've got more water down there. I've got a hot water heater down there for the shower. One thing I hope to do later on is to put solar power so that we can power the lights we can power the hot water heater because right now we're dependent on the grid and that's really not the best option but it is what it is for right now so found this really cool old Chinese uh, it was a screen my mom got it from a estate sale I bought it from her but it's hand carved really cool and it was circular so I begged her for it and uh, we put it in here but it's pretty fitting and so in here is the master bedroom. You can see this is the only oceanfront view room in the whole bunker. And so obviously that's just a sticker that I put on the wall. Um, we've got a fan over there by the rocking chair. You can see it's got that big white thing on there. That's a charcoal filter. So it will filter out any contaminants that may or may not be in the air should you need that. We did a pitiful attempt at drawing some clouds on the walls, or ceilings rather, just to give you a little sense of, you know, uh, peace, I guess. Little bed, no real frame to it, just um, box springs and a mattress. All right, we've got these over here. So these are just cushions that you can throw out on the floor, giving the, you know, extra room to sleep for the kids or, or sprawl out or whatever. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the bunker. Can't really think of anything else to tell you about. So, i tell you what, why don't we go back up top and check out the breather pipes. And then we will get to the videos that show you how this thing was actually put in. 
You can see the construction of it. You can see us bringing it down here on a little bitty trailer that was way too small. The excavator we brought in to dig the hole, set it in, a little bit of concrete, a little bit of that, but it, it'll show you how it kind of evolved into what it is and how you can do this yourself you know, for not a lot of money. These things online, I've seen them go over from like 75 grand to over a hundred just for the metal structure. So if you have the ability to weld or have a, you know, any type of facility nearby that does these type big drains and you can talk them into it like I did, uh, they're gonna think you're crazy at first, but we saved a ton of money by doing it this way. So we'll go up top, check it out. One other thing we thought about was, hey, if stuff goes bad, you need a sustainable food source. And so hopefully your honeybees didn't get blown away in the nuclear apocalypse. But we've got some bees up here that sit up on top of the wall, the retaining wall that encases the bunker. And so just a kind of a neat little hobby thing that we're trying just to see how it works out. So they got some honey in there. We might rob a little bit and uh, try it out. So here we are up on top. You, you know, other than the breather pipes, which you probably can barely see right now, you would never know that there's a bunker buried below here. And so once we built the retaining wall, then we just backfilled all of this, and then you could build whatever you want on top. So we're going to build an aviary because we've got a greenhouse, we've got some really cool parrots in there, and we're going to build them a place where they can fly around. And so that's a really good reason for you to hit the subscribe button right now. So you can see that video to come too. I really didn't plan ahead and uh, I'm more of one of those, um, you know, measure once, cut twice kind of guys. So really should have measured twice on this. My breather pipe is way too low. So we've got to extend that before we pour the pad for the aviary. But the reason this one's low and the reason that that one down there is high is because the change in pressure, just that little bit, will cause not a crazy airflow, but at least some air exchange to get you some fresh air down in the bunker in case your fan's not working, you don't have power, what have you. And so here's the tall breather pipe. Uh, kind of looks dumb right now because we got this rope tied around it for the little plant nursery over here Which we're kind of building that too. We might have a video on that but Maybe later on. I don't know uh, Here's another beehive. This one's pretty cool This has got a viewing window And you can check them out and see how they're doing on the inside not any honey just yet, but it's still early But I see them in there working on it and they're getting the little cells ready to put honey in so pretty cool little hive there and guys really that's about it you know so check out the pictures and you'll see step by step how we built this thing how we excavated how we put it in how we put the little angled section how we put the the little square entrance room if you will to put the door on you know it was a good bit of work I'm not gonna lie but it's very doable if you have just some engineering ability, I didn't go to college, so I don't have an engineering degree, but we built it and it works. It's not the prettiest. I'm sure it's not the most elaborate, but hey, when that storm comes through and you can go down there and chill and just watch TV with your family and not have to worry about a thing, it's a pretty nice feeling. So give it a shot if you're willing. Okay, now we're going to show you how we built this thing. There's my buddy Aaron standing in the pipe. With his eyes closed, it looks like. Uh, there she is in the shop, being welded and put together. There's your angled section uh, where your stairs go. And these are the rails inside, the where you put your floor on. Makes life a lot easier on you. Uh, this is after we got it delivered. We painted it. And only had a small trailer that day. So we had kind of a sketchy ride around to the house we had to make some room for it so i had to tear down the tree house and the 
big old pine there. The kids were a little pissed at first, but then I told them and under the tree house was much cooler. So they let us do it. This is a pretty big pine. And it's gone. So then we dug our big old hole in the side of the bank there and lowered it down in, added a little bit of concrete just to hold it secure, put the floor in her, uh, brought in the little door housing section. There's Aaron again welded up for me. Dad bringing around the door. Aaron again welding. There's some of the plumbing coming out. Uh, building the floor. And you gotta build curved walls, obviously. There's your under the floor storage hatch. Simple countertop, bathroom. Pretty much finished. Bedroom. Super important tip here. Dig you a French drain to allow any water holding around your bunker to find its way out. I learned that the hard way. So, there you go. Here we are making the footer for the retaining wall. Stacking up some blocks. Almost done. Moving a little dirt around. We brought some topsoil in just to kind of backfill so we could go grass on top. A little bit of mulch to pretty it up. A little shameless plug again for our blocks. And so our first, first tornado came through not too long after we had it finished. It wasn't a horrible one, but I mean, it's a tornado, so it's kind of cool. We, uh, you can tell we're super worried, kick back, feet up. That was probably the nicest thing about this is you don't have to worry, you know, as far as a tornado is concerned, there's nothing that can happen to you. So it's kind of cool to be able to keep your family safe like that. So we like said it wasn't horrible, blew some stuff around, took a good many trees down. There were some houses destroyed, don't have any pictures of that, but luckily uh, no loss of life, nobody hurt. Um, and then it was over. So cleaned up the yard a little bit, put this next picture in really just because I'm super proud of our grass this year and uh, kind of wanted to show it off a little bit. Oh, a special thanks to my cameraman, beekeeping buddy, Fortnite partner, my son here. Uh, super thankful for all his help on this. All right, so thanks everybody for watching. We're going to keep our eye on you. Make sure you show up for the next video when we build the aviary. So hopefully this wasn't too painful to watch. We appreciate you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Later.